Hi, my name's Owen Landsberg, and I am the Dungeon Master for Helios, a custom 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons campaign setting. My name is Kellen Quinn, and I play Rugus Mathieu, a human monk. My name is Victoria, and I play Donna Mara Tealeaf, a warlock lightfoot halfling, and this is my sprite, Coloco. My name's Andrea, and I'm Nessie. I'm a bard, level 3. Bear King Koala. My name is Derek. And uh, my character's name is Grinrick Frozenbeard of the Ice Dwarfs. Okay. All right, so let's start this off. Our adventure begins in the city of Seraph, inside the more often than not tavern. You all have just finished a hard day's uh, work for your guild or playing as bards. The Dragon's Maw is the one that Grinrick here works for. Uh, you guys meet here usually to unwind after the day. It's a pretty popular tavern, and it's actually very unusual for a tavern because it's a caravel ship that's been docked and turned into, or like repurposed to be a tavern. Um, so it's run by Drekus, which is a uh, gnome, and his wife, Hilda. Uh, and so you guys will be there. Uh, as you guys are entering in, you look around and you see various sizes, sexes, and races within this tavern. Everyone there, of course, is having a merry time as they eat and drink until they can't eat or drink anymore. There's a couple games of chance and cards going on around you, and even goblin tosses uh, happening in the back. Nessie and Donna Mira, uh, you two are uh, with a couple other bards, uh, standing in the corner playing music, and it's actually going quite well, and people have tipped you a lot. What's great uh, about this place that really draws people in is uh, Drekus is a wizard himself, and he actually uses his magic to enhance the, kind of like the mood and setting of the place to the point where when you, the moment you step inside, no matter how many people it is, no matter how hot or sweaty it gets, it always smells of baked bread and sizzling meats. Cool. And he kind of uses that kind of like, like the in and out thing, like it draws people yeah. in, you know, it gets people hungry. This so is that's kind of the point. Up. It's like every single time you walk in, it, it's almost as if you're hungry again. And so some people have even like kind of questioned his magic to that. Be like, are you enchanting us to make us hungry so you make us spend food? There's no legal matters. No one's really been able to prove it, but it's kind of like a fun little thing. So the owner, the, the gnome named Drekus, is working the bar. Uh, he's a taller gnome standing just under four feet. He has fiery red hair that stands on end, a long slender face that ends with a goatee that's blue in color. His whole outfit is actually of these two colors. He wears a long colonial jacket that is royal blue with red trim along it and a white undershirt uh, to, that accents the entire outfit. He even has his cat sitting next to him that is the same color as Drekus' red hair. You see Hilda, uh, his Name wife... Cat. What? Name of the cat. Uh, Snickers. Hilda, Drekus' wife, is a little bit shorter of, the, of a gnome. She has a deep green skin... Uh, is it Drekus or... Drekus. Oh, sorry. Drekus, D-R-E-K-U-S. I almost read someone else's. Um, she has a deep green uh, wench's outfit on that really accent her boobs to the point where it's like almost like she doesn't have a neck. Uh, and she uh, is working the tables, but it's far busy for just one person to work, but they don't like to have anyone else working here. Uh, lastly, you see the orc Muzga, which Grenric, Grenric knows. It's a, she works for a rival guild called the Golden Tooth. Muzga is a female orc uh, with wolf hide wrapped around herself. Her deep green skin draw, almost draws as much attention as her hauntingly bright yellow eyes. S uh, scars run across her body, each one telling the story of a past battle, and she has axes on both her sides and a bow strung across her back. And last week she challenged you to a drinking contest and you smoked her. Uh, so she seems to be eyeing you pretty bad to the point where her stare you can feel. Uh, and sitting next to her is her halfling uh, confidant and best friend named Berter. Berter. You sit at a table, and after a couple minutes, Hilda comes in to greet you, Grenric. Ah, uh, well, hello, Grenric. Uh, I see Muska still hasn't forgiven you since you beat her at the drinking contest last week. I was told her hangover was so bad, she couldn't work for three days. Good for you, though. Um, be cautious. You'll never know what she'll do to get back at you, though. Uh, usual, I'm assuming? Ha! Yes, two dwarven ales for me. Uh, food? Uh, big amount is good for Grenric. Uh, okay, and then, uh, you want me to put Nessie's and Donna's food here for them too? Once oh, yeah. the little ones will eat too, yes. Uh, she walks away from you, and you guys are free to kind of go out the bar. I look over at uh, Muska. She's still glaring at you. And I wink at her. 
She <laughs> and I laugh. <laughs> she, <laughs> and I wave with a little hand wave. She like takes her mug of ale like and is like drinking it and then she spit like <laughs> like spits out a little bit because she can't believe you did that. And, like slams it down on the ground and stops paying attention to you. Hilda comes back and she sets down the food and she sets down your guys' as usuals as well for once you're done playing. You see the food and you like finish up the song, do 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 and then you guys go and join uh, Grenric at the table. I want to finish the song. I could get a hot I could get a hot Yeah, the way it got me now. I could get a hot I could get a hot Oh, please, let's go. <laughs> when they get up to me, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, they're going to come on either side on the bar stools, and I'll pick them both up so that they can sit on the, on the stools. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, thanks. Uh, so a couple minutes into you guys eating your meal, uh, Rugus, you make your way down to uh, the more often than not tavern. Uh, Kurik, the leader of the Dragon's Maw, uh, has told you that you're going to be joining Grenric here, uh, and he's usually here after the day's work. Uh, you walk into the tavern and you immediately see uh, everything that I described before about the tavern, you know, his yeah. and his wife Hilda. You even notice Muzga. You've never seen Muzga before, the orc. But you can see that she is just, like, staring, like, straight at Grenric. And it's just the most, like, evil hatred stare possible. And you're like, what? So you're immediately like, what the hell just happened? Like, yeah. what did I walk into? Uh, you look around the room, and him being the only ice dwarf, he's pretty easy to spot here. Drek is the owner's next yes. Oh, hey, Rugus, how you doing? Uh, another day. Yeah? Uh, That's just it. Five, five pints, I'm guessing, like usual? Make it six today. Ooh, six. Wow, okay, that will be, yeah. uh... Two silver. Give him four. Oh, well, thank you. And he puts down seven. <laughs> All right. Yeah. As a carry my seven years, you go to. You, you must be a uh, ice beard. You tap on me, and I look at you, and I have like food all in my beard. <laughs> and I grab, uh, grab your hand, and I shake it. The one with all the beer in my hand. Yes. Oh, Drakus! Oh, uh, 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 few more silver. I'll take another seven. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> he he slides you back the silver, uh, and he uh, goes, you've, "You've paid enough." And he puts another seven on the table. For thank you, Drakus. If you need anything else, talk to Hilda, though. Will do. <laughs> Sorry, comrade. That's okay. You must be the one I'm supposed to meet. Oh! I'm Rugus. 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 Close enough. Rugus. Rugus. Yes, yeah, Rugus. Uh, Akure told me about the Rugus. You seem. skinny. You seem. stout. Oh, oh yes. You're welcome. Ice Dwarf is, is big. So, uh, what's up with the, uh,. The pretty lady over there catching your attention. <laughs> Orc is my pepin. Oh, okay. <laughs> I challenge her. I win drinking contest. Well, you drink, do you? <laughs> oh, I drink! I drink like Cyclone! No, we're gonna get along just... <laughs> just immediately down and it slides past my beard. So he basically dumps his beer on the ground. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you hear me I expect nothing worse yeah. from it. It's like all those like frat boys who like pretend they can drink and they're, Bruh, really, they're, 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 they're like chugging the beer, beer but it's all just falling off their heads. Yeah. That's what he does. He gets pretty excited. You are? Nessie. The bear. Koala. Okay. And you are? I'm Donna. So did they just stick me with the shortest crew possible? Or did we just... Very good. I That's... pay good money for what they do. What do you do? <laughs> You'll see. We do everything. Oh no, now I know why I pay top dollar. <laughs> Believe you me. <laughs> I'm the big shot when it comes around these parts. Especially here at... It more often than not. And I'm quite a frequent flyer here too. I've only seen you once or twice though. I've never seen her. I pointed to, mm -hmm. to 
Muscular. muscular. Is she still looking at me? Yeah, she is. Oh, uh, you, 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 now that you look back at her, you see uh, her halfling friend uh, Berger. It's a, a male halfling. Yeah, yeah. It's like trying to like like get her attention. It's like it's like you can see it. It's like stop looking at them. Like it, it's just a drinking contest. I'm looking at her and I'm twirling my beard in in with my. So beard. she once again like is taking a drink and says, "Spin it out this time." She slams it down on the ground and then like stands up. And then you see Birder get up on the table. It was like, no, 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 it's not worth it, it's not worth it. And then Musket just, and walks out. Mm. What a waste. Grunerick not bad guy! <laughs> Do you speak Orcish? Mm. So, uh, when you, when... No. Okay, so when you said, uh, like, Grunerick not bad guy, like, you can hear her... And, like, storms out, but you don't speak Orcish, so you don't Oh, you made a friend. Did anybody understand what she said? No. no. Mm, don't She's bad. Well, Fergus, you know, um, Kirk assigns you to meet them, that in yes. the, he's uh, said in the morning you guys should come visit him. So you guys have the night to do with what you want, but in the morning, the first thing to do is to visit uh, the Guild Hall. So, Kirk says we meet in the morning. What kind of missions do you normally go on? We're not police, necessarily. We are do you different. Take care of bad guys. We take care of bad guy. Yeah. Okay. Do you put criminals in jail? Uh, if if they survive. Do you do that when people ask you to do it? When they pick up? If they pick up. Your police. In, in my country, back in in Ice Mountain, we have a saying that goes as such. We say no police. We straight underground. A young tiefling had it bad because he's brown. Uh, tieflings in this world are called hellbreds. Hellbred because he's brown. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. But I'm going to take your word for it. Uh, Nessie and Donna, is, what are you two doing while they're having this existential debate? I'm just thinking about songs. You clip this. And just to like, tuning them out. I, most of the time, I don't really understand what he's saying. I don't even think he understands what he's saying. No. Most of the time. Yeah. Uh, Donna Mira? Um, I climb down this stool and I walk around the bar playing my guitar. Okay. So, uh, you give me a performance check. <laughs> Nineteen. Uh, total? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. Um, so while you're walking around, five silver are thrown at you while you play your guitar, so you earn five silver. Hilda comes back up to the table. Oh, um, I hope everything's tasting, tasting good. Is, is it good food today? Hilda, it's always wonderful with you. Thank you, Rugus. I appreciate it. I, I stoop over the, the bar table, and I go, Hilda, Hilda, I love you. But uh, I'm, drunk not, already. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I'm not drunk. Yeah. Yes, yes, you are. I, you I come mean, every night, and you say this exact same thing to me, and you always end it with "I'm not drunk." Hilda, Hilda, I just I need more food. You okay, okay. Babusha. Two more silver. So uh, she 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 leaves, or she'll. Anyone else see anything? Anyone? I'll do another point. Thanks. Okay. Do you need beer? I'm not at the table. Oh yeah, you're playing. Okay. Hey. Donna, you need beer. Uh, 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 oh, and I throw please, more. Thank you. I, I give an extra copper for the little one. Ah, uh, sure. A little, a little wine. So she'll leave. Couple minutes later, she'll come back and give you guys everything that you need. So, Rugas, Rugas. Yeah, Rugas. Yeah. What? What do you do? Like, how do you... I'm a Zulu! Yeah. That's what I do! I... How do you... When we... When we get the bad guy... What... <laughs> what are you going to do? Well, punch him! Uh, Hard! Oh! Oh, yeah! Yes. Yeah! 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 Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Like, uh, I like this Yeah! Part. She I, gets it! Can I show she gets it. it! Can yeah. I show you my hammer? Where's Gabber? Oh, and I grab... This is my battle hammer. 
Burn. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, what's it called? The bur- <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait! Wait, it's funny! Wait. No! It's a great hammer, man. You it's say a great it. I, I use it to punch whole size of <laughs> bear <laughs> bottom. Oh, I bet you do. Yeah, you really like to ram it in there, don't you? Oh, no, 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 no! That's what Axe is for. Oh, oh. <laughs> right. What was I thinking? Axes. Oh, axe for putting in enemy and then kicking out. And then putting in enemy and then taking out. And then oh, yeah. Putting in enemy and taking out. Ah! Always pull out. So, always. Can I get con saving throws from you guys because you guys are axes so dry. Did you roll a seven? <laughs> She like little like looks at someone. She finds like she finds um, an elephant or something like one of the elephant kinds. Um, uh, Luxodons. She finds like Lux and like like pulls him over, picks him, and like the guy like just picks him up and carries him off. And she's like, I'm the only one in the room. So don't worry about it. You guys are regulars, okay? Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I you were cut off though. I Kill that. Yeah. Can I get food? No. You're done. Food. You too. I got to. I no, didn't get I it yet. I need food for the other customers. You, she didn't bring. Waitress didn't bring. Yes, she did. Oh, it's <laughs> right here. Oh, 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 oh. My bad. Thank you, Hilda. Then don't you touch me. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Nessie, Donna. Yeah. I have a room here for, for your usual stay. Thank you for playing for the night. It's on the house. Thanks, Hilda. We'll be going upstairs. That way. Is she drunk? Uh, a little. Okay. A little. So you two, so you two then go pass out. Okay. Grenrick. Mm. Uh, I. What What are you doing now? I, I'm eating. Mutton. Are you just gonna basically oh, sit Grenric. at this table and drink until you fall asleep? Uh, That's a yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so, eventually you pass out, and Drekus and Hilda just don't even worry, like, bother about you. They know you're comfortable, this is where you want to be, because this is what happens every single night. You basically drink yourself to a stupor, you pass out on the table, and you wake up next morning. Who's the drunk in the group? Everyone, it seems like, besides <laughs> Messi. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, you guys wake up in the morning, uh, Okay, so, I- can I still be asleep? Can yeah. Still, okay. Yeah, yeah. You see, like, a puddle about the size of maybe a third of this coming off from my face. So what's a third of this for the listeners? Oh, it's about maybe, uh, like a foot by a foot puddle of drool coming from my- my maw, my mouth, my jowls. Your mop and you're part of the dragon's mop? Yeah. D right. Dwarf mob. So yeah, dragon. so you just walk down. All all three of you wake up around the same time. You're hungover, not like super bad, like puking, yeah. but like you got that little headache. Yeah. Or you need to drink some Pedialyte to get rid of that uh, headache, you know. Mm -hmm. You two are like you. 
all three of you walk down. You two are fine. You're, yeah, you didn't drink enough. You're, you're a halfling. You're all about drinking anyways. You can probably out drink him. Uh, and what? by him, I mean Grenrick. And so you two, like, all three of you just walk down the stairs, and you just see him at his usual table, and there, the, the puddle is not there. It's sunken into the wood, and now the wood has, like, changed that, like, dark color as, like, get water spilled on it. And you just see it's, like, think, think, it's, like, just saliva keeps, sli like, dripping off. I, just look at I go to his leg, and I start shaking it. Morning! 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 Hilda. I'm not. I love, no. I love you, Hilda. No, I'm not Hilda. No. 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 Ness. Nessie. Nessie. Nessie's here. Uh, Ness. Nessie. Ness. Yeah. Ness. Yeah. Ness. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 It's morning. Morning. You, you stay down here again. Tonight. Yeah. Uh, morning. Oh. Uh, Could you remember you so Hilda immediately yeah. comes up and she drops over like this like s like serum that you drink this like viscous like stuff and it's meant to kind of help cure hangovers. One gold. One, one more, please. Come on, you gave it to me for silver last time. No, I didn't. You're just too drunk to remember. It's always been a gold. <laughs> okay, here you go. Okay. My love. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay, and she she runs back. She pours some of it. And yeah, it's it's basically like a potion of healing, but instead it like just ah. cures hangovers. So yeah, it's like this little shot. Oh sweet, I call it. of the gods. And so you, you guys know after about an hour, it, like it takes effect, and you guys are cured of your hangover. My people call this cool jarring for idiots because I'm idiot. My people call this delicious because it cures my hangover. Through that. Yes. So, uh, Rubius and uh, Grimrick, you two know that, like you said last night, that you need to go meet Kirk, so you need to get in the guild hall. Because uh, Nessie and uh, John Amir aren't part of the guild, they're not allowed in. So you guys will probably just stay here, and you'll provide music for the tavern in the morning. Cool. Okay. Uh, here, you, s you sing here, and I pick her up gently and I put her on box. Put her in the, in the <laughs> I need to talk out of character. I put her on the box. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb. You're so diverse in there. Little I love, I love Mary their music. Their music makes me feel so good. So good. Okay, so you guys start to walk towards the Dragon's Maw. You know it's close to the constabulary uh, for the city. Uh, this guild hall is nothing fancy for you guys, but it's very functional. Very much like how Kurik acts. He's, he's not very fanciful or flavorful. It's functionality with him. You come up to a solid steel door, and painted across it is your guys' symbol. A dragon's mouth opened up wide. You knock on the door, and like a peephole uh, slides open, and someone from behind it says, Who should you never laugh at? And you answer, A dragon. And that's kind of your guys' code for, to get in. You hear like a couple locks like sh sh start to unlock and like you, you hear that heavy plank come up from the door uh, and it opens up and you see Jalen, who is a human with vibrant blue eyes and hair as brown as trees, dressed in leather armor with an, uh, a sword at his side and a crossbow on his back. It's like, oh, Grenrick, sorry, I didn't recognize you. Um, Rugus, you're the new recruit, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm guessing you're here for your job today? <laughs> Yes. Okay, um, yeah, I heard Kurik has an uh, actual pretty cool one for you guys. I don't know what it is, but, I mean, if he says it's a good job, I'm pretty jealous. I'm sure you're kind of sick and tired of working on the Forge all day. I don't ever talk about Forge like that. Forge is beautiful for me. It's like a bosom of mother. Have you always like this? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm sorry. He, uh, yeah, he's, he's pretty, uh... Rugus, welcome. Oh, yes, I just like, ignore him. He, he he talks a lot, uh -huh. as ice dwarves do, and it's just ramble oh, and yeah. inconsistent, and their sentences don't even make sense sometimes. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. As long as he can point in the direction where I'm supposed to go. All right. And so he opens up uh, the door fully and lets you guys in, and he closes the door behind you as you guys get in. Uh, you make your way through the guild hall. You first pass the mess hall. Breakfast is being served. 
and it's quite, uh, the smell is quite delicious. Uh, Tantor, who is your guys' hunter and cook for the guild, uh, is cooking the meal, and people seem to be enjoying it a lot. Uh, next, after the uh, mess hall, you guys come across the training room. You see a couple fellow guildmates sparring with various weapons. Uh, one of them turns and looks and sees Rugus, a uh, wood elf uh, named Lalavin. Copper hair tied up, uh, L A L I N V E N, Lalavin. Uh, copper hair tied up into a knot and hazel eyes that seem to pierce your soul with her gaze. So, new guy! When are you going to step into the ring and prove yourself what it takes to be a real guild member? I know you had to go through training to get in, but those initiates, they aren't real contenders like me. How about this? If I beat you in a sparring match, you buy me a drink. Let's make it two. Done. Alright, so sh she'll clear this, uh, the sparring arena and fisty cups? As always. Alright, uh, let's roll for initiative. Uh, you first. Go first. first <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get? Three! Okay, I'm definitely going first. She got a 16. Uh, so we're going to go first to get a pin. So that's uh, two consecutive athletics checks in a row to get to a pin. Okay. And that will be the sparring rules. Okay. Unless you want to trade blows. Acrobatics works? Acrobatics is, f is for... Uh, I'll allow for this. For this, okay. for sparring, yeah. Sure. Okay, so she's going to go first. Uh, go ahead and give me an acrobatics check. She goes for an athletics. Oh, what'd you get? A one. Sweet. Plus ah, plus four. Oh, ah. so five. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. So she she comes up to you. You see that she kind of like sizes you up, and she sees you like try to like make a step to dodge, but she anticipated the stop, so she immediately sweeps your legs and throws you onto the ground. Now she's on top of you. Oh, your turn. So don't, don't normally start off this way, but uh, man, I'm always, always thinking with one of their heads. Oh no no. I won't go easy anymore. Alright. Here we go. 20. Oh, yeah, okay. So, like, she now, like, she has you basically in, like, full guard because she swept your legs and is on top of you. Mm -hmm. And so you easy, like, she goes to punch you once to start it, and, like, you grab her hand and, like, you twist over and do a full reversal, so now you're on top. So which position you like more? Obviously, me on top, and as she says that, give me another roll. Let's see here. 18. She beats you, and so uh, you are going to start to go for like a, uh, what's it with like the, um, when you put the head in between the legs? Triangle. Triangle choke. So you're going to like, you go around and like you flip over for a triangle, because you're trying to show off and yeah. impress her, obviously. Right. And she, so you go for it, and she immediately slips out, and then she like uh, grabs your legs and then like flips you over into almost um, leg, uh, what's a, uh, what uh, ankle lock. Leg lock. Okay. Yeah, so she's going for like an ankle or like leg lock. She goes... This is more my position, and she and when she says that, she has one of her feet like straight up in your groin, and she's pushing up in there, and you know it's on oh. purpose. Oh, she a feisty one, aren't you? <laughs> oh. Yeah, you probably do. Yeah, yeah. Action, what'd you get? Uh, action point. Okay. <laughs> so action points, we allow advantage on rolls, so you now only have four. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> what did you roll? <laughs> one. Both times. Oh my first god. Time, oh, first time with okay. three. With quite ease, like she starts to twist the ankle and you feel you had no escape on this. She has it dug <laughs> in and your balls are starting to hurt from her foot digging in too and you tap out. <laughs> Ooh, a little too early in the morning for this. Oh, yeah, really? But, uh, Sound like a lot of my ex-boyfriends. Yeah. You know, it's because I like you, I'll still buy you those two drinks. Call them date. No. I won, so you have to buy me those two Right. Drinks. You're not going to. You have Earned to. Yes. No, let me go ahead and get that four silver off you right now. I'll get you a red check on that. Nope. Four silver. No silver pieces. Uh, what do you got? Some copper and gold pieces. She'll give you uh, six silver if you give her the four. Okay. Good, so give her the gold piece and she gives you six silver. Done. Well, uh, I would say it was pleasurable, but uh, from what I can tell, you're not really packing, so no. Pride. This is hurting my groin right now. <laughs> and I, I walk up behind him and I slap him hard on the back. You did good job. You did good job, Rugas. Thank you, Ice Beard. It's okay. You're new. You're new. <laughs> yeah. you know. If it means anything, she's saying this to you. You did better than him. And she points at 
You see me waving high at her like this <laughs> with a little hand wave, and I wink at her. All right, let's go, Snowflake. All right, so you finally reach uh, Kurik's office. Uh, like I said, much like the appearance of the building, there's nothing really fancy in his office. Everything is very functional. He has multiple books and maps across uh, the two walls that are in there, and his desk is very well organized. It is like to a T, almost like someone who has like OCD would have everything like perfectly aligned on his desk. Uh, and what really uh, catches your eye is he has this uh, like emerald orb that like floats on top of it, like above his desk. He has like a uh, like a steel contraption and it floats above it. Ah, Grenric! I see you've met Rugus. I uh, hope you two didn't get into trouble at the knot last night. Gurik, mm. my man! And I slap the table hard as I sit down. Okay. Do I knock anything over? Yeah. So not everything like gets like super knocked over, but like it immediately like like it just it just shakes a bit. Shakes a little, and he immediately goes ding ding, and like starts putting everything back to order. <laughs> you know I don't like that. Funny, funny guy. I love you. So uh, let me. Uh, Kurik is a, a dragonborn, and so he has uh, deep red scales. And so in red. this, yeah, red. So in Does this, that mean anything? no, uh, yes, actually, kind of. So in this rule, the dragons are flipped. The chromatic dragons are good, and the metallic dragons are evil. So if they're you know red, black, green, white, they're good. If they're the golden, silver, and stuff like that, that's evil. So he has deep red scales, and even his eyes are molten lava in color. They even swirl as if molten lava would. Yeah, uh, and so and he's very uh, not like super regally dressed, but you can tell he's taken the being the uh, chapter. He's like so he's like the uh, chapter leader of, of this um, section. So you see, he's taking this office very seriously. Um, yes, um, well, enough small talk. Um, and don't do that again. I don't know how many times I have to tell you. Do what? Slap the table. But your friend. I'm your boss, not I'm a friend. I still love you. I'm sorry for assigning you to him. Anyways, uh, he says, enough small talk. Let's, let's get to the, the mission at hand. So um, he pulls out a, a scroll. It's uh, tied up with some yarn and hands it over to uh, Grenrick. Uh, it seems like a caravan was hit a couple days ago. Uh, Udo Vegdid, uh, the local owner of a general goods store, is paying us to get his shipment back. One of the survivors of the attack said it was the Brown Banner Brotherhood. Uh, uh, should I roll? No, you guys know this. Uh, yeah, you guys know this. Uh, it's kind of like an outlaw guild on the outside. Not like a guild, but like they're just like a group of people. Um, Small time. Yeah, but you guys have notoriously dealt with them over and over again. Uh, and it seems like their, their numbers are always coming back. Our scouts say they're holed up about two days north of here in the Vrelin Mountains. Uh, we know they've actually taken up hold near the Golgotha. And so you guys uh, know... How reliable is this information? Very. It's our scouts. Uh, Gol Golgotha is uh, a general term for, like, uh, necropolises or something like that. Um, uh, cities of the dead, just like uh, mortuaries or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Golgothas were the terms used for clerics of Amrius, because uh, Amrius is very much, uh, their clerics are trained morticians, because they, they not only deal with life and death, but they also take care of the dead bodies. And Golgothas were uh, buildings that they put higher up members of the uh, okay. uh, cleric, uh, cl clergy from Amrius into. Uh, but you know, back when the decree 800 years ago was made, they stopped doing these Golgothas because people were dying too fast that they had to take up with them. So this Golgotha was like sanctioned off and was like, no, and they magically sealed it. So they're like, nope, we're done here. We're not going to do this anymore. So they basically just have a cemetery. So they're they in the magically sealed place? No, no, no. We, uh, we buy it. Yeah, we know they've taken up hold near it. So, because it's kind of like a, like a stronghold almost now. Right. Uh, so you can still, like, climb it and stuff like that. There's just no way in because they've magically sealed it. Uh, and then he says, If you have any other questions, go see Udo. His shop is named The Hidden World. And then, so with that, he's going to ask you guys to leave because he has a busy day ahead of him. Okay. Bye. Before I leave... Yeah, he just stares at you and then looks at the door. Yes, Before I leave, I just kind of slightly tap the pencil slightly off. And he immediately... Ch and just fixes it. Then I walk out. All right. So you guys walk out. Where do you guys want to go? You like you like Kurik? 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 I think it's pronounced Kurik. Kurik. 
Little snowball. Snow He's all right. Look, we need to talk. We need to talk about my name. Yeah, that has something to do with snow and your facial hair. Got it. Let's go. Mm. <laughs> Let's go, Foster. All right, so. Ladies, while they were in the guild hall, is there anything you would have liked to have done at the tavern? Hmm. Weren't we waiting outside? I thought they were waiting Oh, outside. were you waiting outside? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. it was okay. standing on a box. Yeah, I oh, put her, I put oh, her gotcha. out of box. Oh, that's right, you were playing man. outside. Okay, sorry, I thought you were playing at the tavern. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the two of were playing outside, so they walk out. Um, give me a performance check, one of you. Just one of you. Okay. Have, have the bar do the performance check. Oh my god. Yeah. You have such a high performance. 22. Yep, yeah. okay, so... Like, let's say they were they were gone for like 45 minutes or so, like, as they walked through, they, you know, talked with a couple people besides what we just roleplayed, and uh, between the two of you, you make two gold pieces. Wow! Oh, okay. Yeah, 22 one, performance? One? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I just, no wonder you keep them along. They practically pay for themselves at this point. Yeah. So they're good. So uh, the, he basically gave you a writ, and you'll see, and you'll see, it's it's a signed document by him and the government saying that you have sanctioned like authority to take care of this matter. So if if you ever question of what you're doing and why you're there, you can just show them this right. writ and just go, we're here on official business. We're good guys. Hmm. And I. Just roll up the writ and I put it in my bag. Okay, probably not. So where are we going? Uh, could you talk to me about about Brown Banner Brother? We those stupid cosules out there. They doing stupid thing. We got to talk to Udo. We talk to Udo. We get shipment back. Because of my backstory, mm -hmm. am I quickly able to find like exactly where they are if I know the right people? Uh, these guys? Well, the the scouts have already been told they, you where they, they are. They, they kind of. Well, can I get a better like information better with the scouts? If you me? want, yeah. If you want to try to go to some contacts and stuff like that, you can. You can if you want. I would. Okay. Yeah. So you guys. So you guys walked out. You you turn to Nessie and Donna and started telling them. About like what you guys were to do, yeah, yeah. and you turn around after you're done, and Rugus was gone. I and so after that, they started playing music, and I sat cross-legged, a dwarf sang cross-legged in front of them while they were playing. Okay, so <laughs> you get you uh, like come back from like wherever it, your CD business business thing was, yeah. and you immediately start to hear the koala singing. Your sky, your sky. Our friends of the BBB 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 The Bureau are of Better Business. Sure. They are... I talked to some contacts of mine. And... They shouldn't be much of a problem. I would still try to take a little bit of caution. Well... They should be no more than a dozen strong. But I don't feel like that's going to be much of a problem. They're still still fine. But should we get going? <laughs> oh, the word! And I look at my, my axe, and I look at my hammer. He's still... No, I'm still drinking. She's pouring more beers. Oh, okay. We drink a lot of beer while we play this game. <laughs> Cheers. So, uh, you guys can either head up to uh, Golgotha, or... As you know, you probably should. You should go talk to Udo before you head because he has payment for you. As we start walking, oh, as we start walking, uh, I I go I f I forgot Udo and I I start walking in the other direction. Hopefully, he walk with me. All right. And yeah. I do a swing step and I follow suit. I'm always following you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you find the store with ease. It's uh, not really a part of the general trade area, probably because uh, Udo couldn't afford the high prices of uh, the real estate there. But nonetheless, Udo actually does make a pretty decent living here. Uh, you walk into the store and you see Udo 
uh, like I said before, he's a hellbred. So that's the tieflings, or tieflings, however you want to pronounce them in this world, they're called hellbreds. Because they're actually in their descendants from uh, demons or devils who have mated with humans. Um, so, and he's cleaning his shop. He has dark gray skin that's almost as unnerving as his beet red eyes. A long flowing yellow robe is what he wears. Uh, and you guys know this because of their history. A lot of people don't trust uh, Hellbreds just because of where they come from. But Udo has kind of earned his place in the city. He's been here long enough and people know he's actually a really good businessman. Uh, he doesn't he doesn't like shortchange people or like, try to make bad deals. That he's earned a little bit of respect within the city as a, as a Hellbred. But that still isn't enough to really uh, do that. So you guys walk in and you can see, and you can tell these are not how Hellbreds talk. So he's putting on the voice for you here. He goes, Oh, well, hello there, customers. Please, come in. I haven't got a shipment of goods in just yet. Some despicable outlaws stole some of my cargo while it's on its way here. But nevertheless, we have some goods to sell. What, do, what can I do for you guys? What are you looking for? What's, what's, do I know him? Other yeah, character? Yeah, you, you maybe had minor dealings, but nothing on a first-name basis. Udo. No. Yeah. Wait. Good man. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. So would he be more of like... A pawn shoppy kind of. Yeah, this is person. like a general goods store. So oh, any, okay. anywhere from like little dolls to some weapons, yeah. to potions to house decorations. Ew! And I run off. And so yeah, you guys. So down the mirror, like she spots something like sparkly in the corner, and she just bolts for it. Yes. And you see her, and she's like just digging through stuff, like stuff is flying, and she all of a sudden just holds up like a little ring. Shiny. Ooh, that's pretty. Uh, gentlemen, what can I do for you two? We want to talk about that shipment that was... We got the word. Oh, are you guys from Dragon's Ma? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, um, the, the, the Brown and Brother Brotherhood, you, you know that they... Yes, the B and B and B. Yeah, the, the Triple Bs. Yeah, we'll just call it, call it that from now on. It's a lot easier for me to say. The Triple Bs, they, uh, they sold some of my cargo. This isn't the first time, but... I actually had something quite particular that I liked and wanted on this uh, caravan. I, what was it? It's a silver chalice. Can I, uh, can I do an inside on Yeah, perception yeah. to check on that? Uh, insight. Insight? Insight. 16. Okay. Yeah, he's, there's... Yeah, 18. Yeah, there's nothing really that he sees to be hiding from this, from you, so... Is there anything special about this chalice, or uh, just nice? No, it's a nice chalice. Jewels and gems inlaid into it. I mean, it's very finely made. It was a great find for me. It's something that can really set me apart and get me inside the trade you're speaking with the sell of this how item. How much is this shipment worth? Um, well, this this chalice is probably worth a couple thousand gold pieces. For five hundred? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you. I'll, I will give you two hundred fifty gold pieces now, and you will have five hundred, and the other two hundred fifty upon arrival. Yeah, we're getting more than than that, though. We I mean, put I'm, our lives I'm going to deal with your boss. Not you. Well, we are, okay. Is there anything we else? Are, we are the best in our group. <laughs> Sorry. Can I can I roll a persuasion or something? Yeah, uh, nat 20 if you want to get higher, because Kurik is the one that assigned this price. So, so close. close. Yet so far away. Ah, uh, come on. Uh, 19. 19. Yeah, nope. So, he's like, the price is the, the price is fine. Okay. Let's talk about the shipment, though. Other than the it's silver okay. chalice. It's okay. Everything uh, else is worth? It's okay. Yeah, I got like a, uh, there's a brass ring, some some new doll shipments. Um, Dolls? Yeah, there's, I got a brass orb with rune sketches, stone disc, a couple swords, and I mean, it's just knickknacks compared to this. Uh, look, I don't, Care about anything else but the chalice. Can I roll insight on that? Sure. Yeah. Don't worry about me. Fourteen. Yeah, he. You can see, like, if he, if you were to bring back any of that, you'll get payment. He hasn't paid for the, everything else. Okay. He's paid. He wants that item back. Gotcha. Because, like he's, he right. said, if he can sell this item at full price, he can actually buy a shop in the trade district where his this sales. Is, this go is literally. Up. Like Baker's Week. Yeah. Okay. If you kindly give us the gold, we'll be on our So, way. Uh, you see, he goes in his back room. You hear the clicks of a, of a safe, and it opens up. Some <laughs> <laughs> You don't need that. You hear 
Uh, and he comes back out with a bag, and he places a bag of 250. Uh, he'll do um, 25 plat for you guys, so it's easier to carry. All right. And I walk out of the store. All right. So you see Grenrick rock out. So <laughs> I, as I step out and everybody steps out, I go, the human, um, what name? Rugus? Rugus. 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 Let's go. Okay, high school stash. Let's do this. And I, I slap my bicep and I go, Hoop! Oh, and that's too rough. I'm gonna fall. Oh, oh, oh. And I, I hold her like this and I go, oh. sorry, sorry, oh, sorry, okay, sorry, okay. sorry, 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 sorry. You have to remember. Down here. Oh. You forget oh, sometimes. Sorry. I look at Donna Mira. I'm not putting you up on my shoulders. <laughs> Gross. And I and I wait. I look at I look at my sprite. You hear what he said? I I tap your sprite. No, you can't. Oh, I can't. Only you those two can see, see it. Only those two can see him. Oh. What is she talking uh, to? So yeah, you you see Donna Mira just turn and to no one, just say. What can you believe said? what she said? Yeah. Ooh. What is she talking to? So I, yeah, I, I keep walking. Okay. Don't answer him. <laughs> she says you were sprite. Okay, so uh, I go, I, I go up, to, I go up to Donna, and I go, hmm, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? That's Coloco. 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 Uh huh. So as as you say that, she like lands on top of his head, but she's so light you don't feel it. <laughs> she's so funny. Cole, go stop that. I give her like the weirdest like biz- look of uh you know bewilderment. bewilderment, and I I keep going, and I keep walking, and I go, don't worry about him, Babushka. And I keep walking. All right. I got uh, so lost. So you guys go ahead, and then uh, since it's still the morning, you leave the safety of Seraph and head northwest into the Vrelin Mountains. There's a road that you guys will follow that leads you straight to the Golgotha. So it's it's pretty like you guys know that back 800 years ago, this was where they would just send all the bodies to be taken care of and stuff like that. You leave the city. You see the lush farmland that surrounds Seraph and provides much of the fruits, vegetables, and meats of the city. Um, after a couple hours, you guys do get into the jagged woods, is what it's called. It's a forest where the trees have actually grown sharp spikes around it to uh, protect it from the various wildlife. So if you were to try to climb it, you'd actually be taking damage. That's like how like, big are these spikes? Like they're wooden thorns, basically growing out of it. Okay. So just a couple inches out of it. Um, but yeah, it's en- it's enough to like actually deal damage to you. Uh, you eventually make it to the base of the Vrelin Mountains after walking through the jagged woods. Uh, and you decide to camp here for the night as it's taking most of the day and the, and the uh, sun is setting. Uh, you guys post up, you have a campfire, you guys take turns taking watch, and the entire night goes without incident. Um, and in the morning, you start to head up the mountain, like I said, there's a road to follow, so you know about noonish you will get up towards the mountain. But you do know uh, you will be getting into the altitudes where there is snow, so there will start to be a little bit of uh, snowfall and uh, snow that you will have to walk through. Oh, good. Snowflake. It's your kind of thing. I like... Uh, is, that was joke? Yeah. Joke. <laughs> <laughs> I put my hand out for you, comrade. And I put my hand out. <laughs> okay. And I keep walking. You're supposed to shake hand! And I run after you. <laughs> you want to chase after the book? <laughs> Come back. You got to shake Grinrick. It makes things I, easier. I roll my eyes as I shake his hand. Okay. okay. Cool. So, uh, half day comes about, and you guys know uh, from the road markers that you're only a couple minutes away from the, uh, from the Golgotha. What would you guys like to do? I'd like to, I'd like to scout ahead. Uh, give me a stealth check. Uh, oh, yeah. at, at advantage, for a oh, reason gosh. you don't know. Okay, there we go. Twelve. Yeah, so 17. 17, okay. 
So, so this is a pretty big stone building. So, I mean, it's not like cathedral status, but you can see there's multiple rooms and floors to this. Okay, um, you, from common knowledge, you guys all know that Golgothas, they don't go up, they go down. So you see the first floor and then it's dug down into the ground after that. Right. So uh, you see um, like stone archways with like carvings on it and uh, Emrius, uh, his, his symbol is angel wings wrapped in chains. So you see within the stone, it looks like chains are carved into the stone around it. Kind of add to that like accent, this is, this is yeah, meant to be something of Emrius. And you see in front of it are three uh, bandits all dressed in brown with brown hoods and masks over them. You can easily tell that these are the brown brother, brotherhood. Uh, and you hear one of them, so you're out of sight. They have zero awareness that you're even where near them. Uh. One of them you hear, oh man, oh man, what are we going to do? Have you heard the rumors? This this Golgotha has been magically sealed for hundreds of years. How in the name of Emery is to tag and get in? Should we follow him or not? There's, no, no, what? No, there's no amount of gold worth going in there. We're, we're done. I don't want to get hunted by the chains. And so you know the chains is a secret organization that, like, if people disobey, right, Emery right, right. Yeah, SS. Yeah, basically. Uh, and then so he says that, and you hear from another voice. <sighs> You know, yeah, you you know what? Ever since Tugging got that silver chalice, when we robbed that caravan, he's been acting super strange. <sighs> okay, you know what? Yao, Rhett, Jules, you three head in and get Tugging back. If he doesn't want to leave, then screw him. Callius, Sappy, and I will stay here. You know what? Tugging may be our leader, but we can continue on without him. So that's what you hear, and you and so you see three of them leave and head into. The Golgotha, and three of them stay. And I head back to them. Okay. After about ten minutes or so, you see uh, oh, oh, oh. Rugius uh, come back to you guys. <sighs> what did you find? There are seven. That's m more than six. You never said there were six. True. So, there are seven, more than six. They, they're a little at sorts with each other right now. So I think they're a little bit weak. They're split up a little bit. Good, we beat them up. But you need to hear this. They got inside. Golgotha! What? They are inside. At least one of them is. He has the chalice. He's been acting... Different. Something's up with that thing. Don't touch it. I what? think. Maybe. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think? Sometimes. I think. <laughs> don't touch it. Oh my god. Uh, How do we take it though? Something tells me we're not going to have to take it. Alright, so. Uh, it, you guys technically, they don't know you're here yet, so... You're... I'm going to leave them to them who are, I'm assuming, in cover. Okay, so you guys need to give me stealth checks then. <laughs> As, so, like, there's, like, there's, there's, like, tree outcroppings, like, here and there, so... Like, there's still stuff nearby that you guys can hide behind, but I do need stealth checks. There, you're at disadvantage. There's trees in there? Mm-hmm. Okay. I know. What you're about to do. <laughs> I'm gonna climb up a tree then. Okay, so you climb up a tree. Mm -hmm. You know, be, because you're cool and you climb up, they won't even think to look up there, okay. so you're good. Okay. <laughs> well, that's not too bad. 18. 18, okay. What'd you roll? Uh, the 13. I'm gonna create a snowball. I'm gonna walk right up to here and just yeah. peg one of them right in the face. Give me, uh. <laughs> pro proficiency plus. Oh, wow, yeah, with that roll, you hit. So, yeah. yeah. So you just peg one of them straight right in the, the face. middle one. Just like bam. you sit there like a pitcher, and you do like a full wind up, and you're like, "I got this," and just boom, <laughs> and just clubs them straight in the face. My bad, guys. So they immediately turn and look at you, and they're and like caught off guard. Like a couple of them like are fumbling for like weapons and shields. Like they have no, they zero like had an idea this was coming. Like I sit there, I can't wait for them. 
Oh no! You found me! I'm just sitting there waiting for them to do what they're Okay, doing. so then initiative. Okay. Hero slot number one. Who goes first? Alright, I'll, I'll do the, the whisper. Okay, so you whisper at them something. So, like, you just, like, look at one of them, and they have no idea where it's coming from. They just all of a sudden start hearing, like, voices in their head, and you're, like, making, like, your koala sounds, like, super distracting and weird. You're, like, singing songs. She's gonna say something. <laughs> so you're making, like, weird koala cat sounds at them? <laughs> so like one of them starts like looking around and like, what the hell is that? Uh, what's your save for that? Thirteen. Fails. So what happens? D D four. Uh plus they get disadvantage on their the next, next attack. Roll. Yeah, next roll. attack roll. Four oh. damage. Okay? Nice. So he's like he's like, oh what the and it's like he's completely confused by the situation of what's just happening. He just got pegged it's the same guy that got pegged with a snowball in the face and now he's hearing like sounds. What in the world is going on? And you can see him, he kind of like wretches in pain a little bit. Okay. Okay, here's slot number two. Well, I kind of want to cast invisibility and just walk up to him and kind of just start like... The moment you make an attack roll with invisibility, you are no longer invisible. Oh, darn, really? Yeah. Okay, well, anyway, I, st I still do invisibility and I walk towards you, Rugus. You can move up to, I think, 30 or 25, right? Do you 25 want to move is a half one. 5, 10, 15, 20. Do you want me to move more? Move just one to... The, yeah, there you go. Okay. But she's in this. Yeah. Uh, it is snow, though, so you are going to leave foot tracks that they can see, but they'll have to take perception checks, which takes an action. So if they do that, then it still slows them down. Okay. But I just want to let you know it's not like you're like completely invisible. Okay. All and right, I, so... Um, I whisper... Yeah. I'm behind you. So you hear that? No. No, you don't. She's invisible. You give her a perception. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's an action to see it's that. It's an action. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And he doesn't. So. Right, so oh wait, no, no, no! You see footsteps. Yes. Of what you yes. have. Yes. Yeah. You're observant. Yeah. As all hell. Yeah. So as your actual is twenty. Yeah. His, yeah. Just passive perception is twenty. Yeah. you. Wait, wait. So he looks at you dead in the eyes, and says that, and you're invisible. Bend or back a little bit and look at Coleco. He knows! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, here's slot number three. And I walk up, up a little bit behind him. Okay, so you see all three of them? Like, the, So they have, um, they have uh, long swords and, and bows. And so you see all three of them just pull out their bows and they're just going to take pot shots at you guys. There's, they, they're smart enough to know not to, to charge you. AC for, 16. um, okay, 16. So the first one's gonna go. Hits. Uh, six, seven damage. Reaction. Okay. You only get one of these. Per turn? Yes. Right. Okay. So, seven damage. Wow, okay. So, he, like, he, like, lines up a shot, and he's, like, super sure he's just gonna hit you square in the head. And so you like, it's just like, and let's go with the shot, and you just go click, and you you just catch it just like inches away from your forehead. Mm. It is, <laughs> and you can as if you want to spend a key point. I would not like to. Give me an intimidation roll. Mm. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that one? Awesome. Fourth time. Okay, so so you 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 catch it. And you make like eye contacts with him, and you like you're about to snap it, and he sees you're trying to, and you just like grip in the arrow, and you, and you, for the life of you, it is like made out of like solid steel. It's not. It's wood. It's just the yeah. side. It's like wood, but he sees that you're trying to snap this, like 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 you're crushing an apple or like a, like right. a can or something, and you're just gripping it, and you're you're just looking down at your hand, and, like what what is going on? And you like he sees the desperation in your face. Yeah. As you were just trying to. And so finally you just get fed up and you toss it to the side. And all intimidation that you had of that is now gone. He thinks you got lucky. Mm hmm Okay. So the second one's going to go. Uh, you're invisible so they don't know you're there. Grenric. My armor class is 17. Just, he, he aims and he, being a dwarf, like you're kind of covered by the stairs that you're sitting behind. And he just completely dink and hits the stairs. Oh, there we go. 
All right. So the one that targeted you is like someone, like when the third guy like looked at it, and he goes, I think I can do better than that. Let's go the arrow, and it hits you right in the shoulder, and you, from a critical hit, you take nine points of damage. Okay. So, uh, so you just like bolt up the stairs as a monk, like normally stairs would be super complicated for like any of the rest of them to run up, but as a monk, you're like, trained in this. It's like, right. diff like this is nothing. So you're just dead sprint, stairs are nothing to you, and you just run straight up to them. Do you have enough to make an attack action? Actually, I do. Okay. And I'm going to. I'm going to... So monks, you can always do two. Yes. If you spend a key point, you can do three. 17. Hit. And the other one is a seven. Miss. Yeah. So like you so like who's the, one that, who's the one that hit me? The one that you're right in front of. Yeah, I pop him right in the jaw. So yeah, you're looking at him and you give a quick one two. First one just swings right in the jaw and but he's able to recover fast enough uh, that you don't you get damage bonus. Attack. It's your dex. And the dex? Yeah. Uh, six damage. Six damage, okay. He uh so you, you give him a solid blow straight in the jaw and you see it staggers him a little bit, but he can tell you're coming up with the second one and so he dodges the second one. Okay. But you you seem to have knocked him. A little silly. Okay, so 18, 19 on a roll, and the other one was a 9, which is going to end up being a 15. All three hit. Okay. Yeah. Dang. So, <laughs> bam! But since they're not simultaneous, he can redirect yeah, the other Yeah, each punch. one, yeah. Yeah. So, one's, one will do 5 damage. Okay, so I'm guessing that's the same one. So the first one you did 6, right? Yeah. 7? Okay. So, for, so you, so... Boom, boom, straight in the jaw, dodge the second one, and you come up, and you, like, grab him by the shoulders and just bring your knee straight down into his face. As you pull him down, and he goes out cold. So, after the first hit, it hits him, and he's out Yeah, cold. and he's out cold. So you have two more that you can get up against the guy next to him. Six for the next attack. Okay. And six again for the next attack. So, once again, you just... But like one two combo, like just you just throw all your might into it and you just do two haymakers straight to his face and he just goes out cold as well. Alrighty, and then I will Yeah, I will sit there. And I don't even have to disengage. Huda, huda. So and, and so you move up and you advance position straight to the third and last guy. Mm -hmm. And I I walk up. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Those, those are difficult terrain to you. Okay, is. so <laughs> I want 5, 15. 10, 15, 15 by then? Yeah. 15, 25. 20, then that's 20. So I get to there. You can dash if you want to keep going. No. So first, I have my crossbow. Okay. And I pop him for 10. Do I hit? Oh, I thought it was a 2. No, so you, like, you, like, you're running up the stairs, and, like, you go to take, sh like, an aim, and, like, you realize that, like, you are not at the right elevation, that he is completely out of sight to you. Okay. You and just pop the shop off, and it just whips. I yell out, Bizda! And I throw back my, my crossbow, and I pull out my battle axe, okay. and with my bonus action, I will go, Oi, Kozul! Get down here and fight me! And I cast um, Compelled Duel. Okay. Did he get a save? Uh, yes. He takes. Uh, he must make a Wisdom saving uh, throw against uh, twelve. Failed. Uh -huh. He failed it. Okay. I see what you're doing here. On his, he has disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures other than me, and must make a Wisdom saving throw each time it attempts to move a space that is more than thirty feet away from me. If it succeeds on the saving throw, the spell doesn't restrict him at all. The spell ends if I attack any other creature. You you provoke him, and so he's face to face with Rugus. Yeah. He immediately turns, and you can just see hatred and seed in his eyes because he understands what you said. And just he pulls out his longsword and is just ready for you. Okay, so here's slot number three. Okay, I'll go. Bessie. I'm gonna use vicious mockery. Okay. <laughs> okay. Did he get a save or anything? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a save on the wisdom saving throw. Failed. All right. <sighs> One point of damage. Yeah. And disadvantage on next attack. Yeah, it, it is seething hatred for the dwarf, Grenric. He doesn't even seem to, like... You seem like the damage. He like looks around really yeah. quick, but he doesn't seem to like pay much attention to wherever it came from. Okay. 
So, all right, uh, it's his turn now. Yeah, so he immediately, like, oh, I can't believe this. So, like, he, like, runs up to you, swings with his sword, and just goes completely over your head, lose his footing, and he falls prone. Nat one. <laughs> nice. You know what, because it's stairs, he's going to roll down a couple of them. To Does that provoke an attack of opportunity? No, it won't provoke, but he'll, he takes a couple points of damage from it. And I yell out, Oh, stupid Zuka. Uh, I come over here for 25 feet, and I point and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so he, like... So just out of nowhere, he starts hearing like this like little child's laughter, and you can see even though he's kind of discombobulated from falling down the stairs, he's like looking around and he cannot tell like where this is coming from. So he now thinks this is also part of the voices he's been hearing from uh, Nessie. <laughs> so Grenric, what do you do? I go up to him and with the flat of my axe, I want to bop him without killing him. Okay. So so go ahead and bop swing. It. He's prone, so you get advantage. Oh, okay. Twist it. Flick it. I love that game. I got a 11. Hit. Hit. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Six and six. Yeah. So, hit, and, uh, I... Sorry. So, so you... Don't even worry about it. So you, like, immediately, like, you just see the opportunity to open. He's super confused, yeah. falling down the stairs, he's hearing laughing oh, voices, goodness. and you just see an opening, and you just take the flat of, like, your axe and just, like, slap him straight across his face. You hit that point in the jaw that just completely knocks someone out. Okay. Like, glass jaw says, yeah. and he is just now out cold. The other two are dead, but yeah. this one, he, he, you can see he's still breathing, and but he's just knocked out. You hear me say... What's good fun? <laughs> and with that, initiative is over, so combat is done. Okay, I climbed down the tree. Okay. That was easy. There are still four more. Hey, come here, little one. You search this. Where did Donna go? <laughs> she's, uh, yeah. she's over there. Where? where Don't worry. I can't. Don't worry. She's about ten. Five, ten, fifteen. She's 15 feet to your right at the base of the stairs. Oh, so with that, you can see footsteps. And out of too. out of playful fun, I gather up some snow and I chuck it at him. So, at, as he says that, you look and you see like a pile of snow just getting get, like piled <laughs> together and like just pulled out and just. 10, 15. We'll say because it's snow, it's not really trying to get past armor. It just hits you. It's <laughs> also <something> just like <laughs> boom. <laughs> Ah, now you really are frozen beard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm frozen beard. <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. good. So you, you have two, two dead guys. You have, there's a little fire with a bunch of crates standing around, uh, and one guy that's been knocked out. We check for uh, whatever they got on them. Okay, so each one of them, you see, they have a long sword. Bows and arrows and the leather armor. Uh, between the three of them, you see about 18 gold pieces. I gather 18 gold pieces? Yeah. I go to the two I, I, I killed, uh -huh. and I take 10 of them. Uh, give me a slide of hand check. Sure. Wait. <laughs> so so he, he, go, he goes up, and he's like doing this, and then all you just hear, ching, 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 like his coins. Excuse me! And, yeah. <laughs> Excuse hey. me, newbie. Where it's for doing? everyone. It's for you everyone. You give it. You give it to party manager. Ma she manages party. Give it to Donna. No, that's not a hand check. No. Yeah. With that, they they know what's happening. So. Oh, they've got to give her all of them. Disadvantage. I give her all of them. Yeah. I so you, you see, new. you see him like look at the coins, and you can tell he's judging whether or not he wants to give you guys all the coins, and he just goes. Uh, fine. Just and, and I go, come here. And I like huddle with him off to the corner, and mm -hmm. I say, "Look, we need to be team." Yeah, don't teams normally follow a plan? We got plan. I I help you kill. That wasn't the plan. We got it. Now look, I put on my shoulder. At the cost. Yeah, so he still has an arrow. This. Look here. You take this, and I 
Can I take a medicine check to try to remove it nicely? Uh, don't. You, don't. I just tell you to rip it out. And I go... I just look at you dead I look at you dead in the eyes and I start giggling just a little. <laughs> and I grab it. I don't make a single Give me a uh, constitution saving throw. Ouch. All right. Constitution! All right. Uh, that was your roll. I love it. So, yeah, you see, like, he is blank faced in the entire time. Like, if he had Novocaine in him, like, that's what, like, he would not feel like a single Good man. I like you, and I tap your chest. I'm going to say, you hit right where I get. Right where he <laughs> So, you pull out your potion of healing, I'm guessing? No, he gave me his. Okay, so, I give you sweet. so you pull out your potion of healing, you pour it straight onto the wound, and roll 2d4 plus 2. 3, 4, so 6. 6. So you heal 6. And, and so you, you see the wound heal, but a scar is left over since it wasn't fully healed. So, thank you, Snowflake. Hey, hey, you need to be teammate. I am teammate. You need to be cool, cool. There's a word. I can't. Cool? Is this more frozen puns? Maybe. I don't think that's a word. Co cooperate! You have to cooperate with comrades. Look, Elsa Ice Queen. I am a what teammate. I don't Elsa get... Elsa Ice Queen? I don't know what these words. Look. <laughs> I will play as a teammate. Look, Rubius, you just need to let it go. <laughs> I'm not you promise? Back I'm you not promise? Back anymore, right? You promise? I I promise. You promise? You give me pinky swear? I don't care what others say. Let the storm rage on. <laughs> Look, this still never bothered me anyway. Good. <laughs> I like you. Oh my god! <laughs> I want you all to be level zero. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Guilty by association. Fives. <laughs> I'll pretend I'm not his girlfriend for ten minutes if... <laughs> when last what you ever saw in the You guys now have this one that's knocked out. You have all the loot. There's crates okay. nearby. I'm assuming you guys search the crates. And you see uh, it's a bunch of makeshift items like he read off. Like the brass ring, some small dolls, metal cloth, the brass orb with like runes sketched on it, stone discs, a sword, scabbards, and... I mean, it's an old key. Can we say that we have all of that without having to write it all down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, he, he said he had the horse with the carriage and stuff like that. Okay. So there's all that stuff there that he named off. There, that silver chalice is not there. You see me grab the man. I put him down here. In the middle of the, of the platform. Yeah, and I straddle him on his chest. Okay, give me an, an athletics check. <laughs> okay, 23. Okay, so you, what? like... like you just sit on top of him. You have like both your knees pinned down on his elbows. This guy is going nowhere. Okay. He up. And I go, hey, he, he, friend. So you, you start like tapping him. You see he's not waking up. And you just take your hand and you just backhand him as hard as you can. Friend! And I whack him. And he, what, who, what, what, who are you? Let me go. Hey. I will walk over here and here. Shh. I'm going hand over his mouth. So okay. he goes to bite. Like, he, he's trying to bite you. He's not going to do any damage because he doesn't have a bite attack. But, like, you you put the hand over, and he immediately is, like, like, like trying to bite Hey! You. Hey! And I grab him by forehead, and I, I just kind of, like, tap him back without trying to do, like, heavy damage yeah, or yeah, anything. Yeah, no, I get you. you but, yeah, you, you, put, you push his head back as hard as you can. Yeah, and keep him still. Yeah. And so, yeah, he's... Ugh. And I go, wait! What? We're all friends here. No, you're Dragon's mom. Mm, no. How did you know? Who else would attack us? Um, I, I'm saying I'm saying there's. That's a good head. question. Well, hold up. I'm your friend. Don't no. Me. My friend. My I, friends are now dead or inside the Golgotha. That's what we wanted to ask you about. How? How what? How, How did you get? I I, li I literally just, I kick him I kick him in the head. Just yeah yeah I get yeah. yeah I kick him. How did they get inside the Golgotha? Ugh, I don't know. It, it was sealed, and then Toggin just walked up to the door, placed his hand on it, and he entered in. How did the other three get in? The door was opened, idiot. Hey, hey, hey! You talk 
with better uh, respect to friend of mine. Nessie wants to do something. I'm walking up. Okay, you yeah. I'm walking. You walk I'm up. Walking. You walk I'm up. walking. You walk up. I'm walking. You're walking up. Oh, what's You're there. Oh, I'm there. You're there the whole time. You're there. Yeah. No, wait, You're but, there. but when I see Nessie walk up, I go with her. You're yeah. still invisible. We're, we're yeah. as a team. Okay. And I know she's there. I go, hey, you talk to my friend with respect or, or... Is that, dis are you just trying to annoy him? In or are you intimidate. Th I'm that's intimidate. Okay, that's give me an intimidation check. Uh, 19. <laughs> Wait, that's a 2, isn't it? No, that's 14. a 14. Oh my god. <laughs> so, you're like, you you like get up like really close to him, like right in his ear. Yeah, yeah. And you just make that face slobber everywhere. <laughs> And then, oh, and like it's to the point where like he feels like he's bleeding from the ear. Goes, okay, 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 okay. What feel do you that? Know? You feel that? You, yeah. You know, are yeah. you going to talk to us with the respect? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> I, I, you can tell he has like a little like still disrespect how he said it. Like yes, sir. But you can tell he's compliant. Okay, you good. Come I on. look absolutely dumbfounded. I like what the hell just happened. Dude, she she's a bard. Apparently, she's the toughest one in party. Friend, you tell us where do we go from here? Home or inside? Hey. Oh. Okay. Okay. Would you like to go? Depends on where go is. Oh, go to sleep there. I smack. I smack him. Yeah, and he's just out. You did non lethal. Yeah. Non -lethal. Okay. So yeah, he's just straight. I mean, he's pinned. His hand yeah. is just right there, and you just do like one straight down into the face, <laughs> and like so, a like right yeah. There. So he's like bleeding from the nose a little bit, but oh. being a monk, you know, like that's yeah. it's nothing. It's just some like residual pressure, and he's just out cold. And I pick him up, and I put him by the horse, and, and we tie him up. Oh, okay. just just in case. Okay. Okay. Have to make sure he's here You're all some, the time. I okay. I got all you. the time. Okay. Can you tie? Can I? Where, where's Donna? That's to the bear still. She's near. She's near. She's always. So, always. being that you've traveled with Donna Mira before yeah. and for quite a while now, you know this is a trick of hers. So, really, from now, all you guys have here is if you want to go complete the mission, you go into the Golgotha, but yeah. the door's wide open. No. And since the decree, none of you have been inside of Golgotha, so none of you have any idea what to expect. Besides the fact that Golgothi is is like the fancy word for city of the dead. So you guys enter into the Golgotha. The word necropolis or city of the dead fits this place perfectly. As you walk in, the walls are lined with carved in sections where dead bodies lay in there. Dry leathery skin, sunken in cheeks, the hair has lost almost all color and has mostly fallen out of these bodies. Because the fresh air hasn't gotten in, it's making it even hard to breathe, and the smell of the place is so wretched from the rotten flesh and stuff, it's almost palpable how much of a smell there is in there. Torches still burn on the walls, providing light for you all to see, but it's pushing away this darkness in every single corner as if the darkness is creeping in towards you. Boots are clanking against the finely made stone floor. In the center of this room, you see a statue of Emrius, the god of life and death. In his hands is a bowl, and you can see that there's water in this bowl, but because of how long it's been since the water has been changed, it's gone rancid and disgusting, only enhancing the smell. You look around into this room that's lined with the dead bodies, and you see a small passage to the east. I want to also do a divine sense. You detect it, and good and evil are both ringing from this place to you. There's not a certain creature type, but you open up your awareness, like it says, and okay. you can feel both good and evil within this place. Okay, so... But you, there's no fiend, you know no this? devil, no, he doesn't, there's nothing, he doesn't... I know if it's celestial, fiend, or fey. Fey, or, or dead. There's none of that here. Hmm. I don't know what, what lurks in this plumbing. Silver chalice, and we leave. I agree. Let's go. And I, I march forward as soon as he says that. And I follow. So, so seeing that there's only one way 
in here, you head to the east. You walk through this passage and come uh, upon another very similar room to the one before. But instead of a statue of Emrius, you see a wooden door that is slightly open uh, to the west of here. A sign that you can all read in your native tongue. So, common, halfling, uh, Bear. Bear uh, Barrick. Like, yeah, yeah. Barrick. And, and Dwarven. So each to one of you, you see it in your native <laughs> tongue. You see, do not enter. Restricted to the highest clerics of Emrius. Hung upon this door. Oh, you don't like this. Neither do I. Maybe we should turn back. Do you normally turn back on your missions? I don't like Emrius at all. But I also respect him. He's... It's my ambition that one day I will... I will topple his reign. So, but now is not the day. So when you say that, the torches flicker as almost if, as if they respond to you saying that. But they dim just a little bit and then brighten back up. I push through forth. The door that you guys see just opens up. And it's like weird and ominous, like it has that creak and everything. For the two of you, Rugus and oh, Grenric, like it's almost like the like weird haunted mansion says so the door opens to you guys, but obviously as Nessie, you you know where, Why? where Donna is. So the door just opens up, but it's it's weird, almost like welcoming and inviting, but in that weird creepy sense. I, as Grenric, have the biggest most deepest, most regretful scowl on my face, like... So, before you guys enter into this next room, I need everyone to give me an intelligence check. So just roll a d20 and add your intelligence modifier. Well, what if I don't have anything next to... It's zero, zero. so I've rolled. Oh, 15. Six. Thirteen. Four. Okay. So, for people who got 10 or higher, you have been kind of counting the amount of bodies that have been on the walls, and within these two rooms alone, you're guessing there's a couple hundred uh, bodies in here. This Golgotha, or this necropolis, has been used. Like, this is an old one. There are clerics of Emrius here that have been, like, from, like, forgotten times, almost. Like, it is a lot of bodies here, just within these two rooms alone. Do you guys continue on? Yes. Yes. And the whole time I'm bickering, like I'm just like, Why are we continuing on in this place? I put my hand on your shoulder. Look. Elsa. Yes. You can do this. Take that fear and let it go. We're in this together. Oh my Brenric, God. you lead the party down further into these stairs, and it seems to go for dozens of feet. You finally hit the, the bottom or the landing, and you see a, uh, another wooden door, but it's fully opened up in front of you guys, and there is a pool of red blood in front of this door. So if there is a wall and the doors open up towards you, on the other side of the wall, on the first couple feet in front of the, in front of the open space, there is a pool of red blood. Please give me perception checks. Okay. Uh, 17. Okay, so 15 or higher, you see just before the opening, like where the, the, the wind door opens, the stone slab in front of it is actually a pressure plate. You're not sure what for, but you can see it's actually risen a little bit, and you can tell that if you were to step on it, it would lower down and activate something. Mm. So I pick her up by the scruff, <laughs> and I... I just put her past the pressure plate because it's it's on a step, right? Yeah. Okay. It, but like when I say it's raised up, it's like millimeters. So I mean, the fact that you guys rolled this, it was noticing millimeters higher yeah. than the rest. Mm -hmm. But because the place is so well made for you as a dwarf, that was obvious. Okay. And it was like, oh, that is something else. And then, are you still invisible? She is. I can't <laughs> freaking understand what you're doing. <laughs> All right, so so no, I put no, no, you no. past the pressure plate. Okay. Yeah. So because uh, you guys are aware of this, I won't even require it, like a dex roll or acrobatics or anything. You can easily just step over it. And I can I look back at him, toss her over. <laughs> and I chuck her with a fifteen. Easily, 
uh, I won't even make him roll because I was good enough. That you you open up your arms, Koala just comes flying at you, and you catch her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll like this. And set her down. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> now you Donna? Can... Oh, yeah. I, I jump. I rolled a 19. Yeah, you easily. <laughs> so, he jumps first. Not knowing where you are, you jump straight at him and just hit him straight on. Give me an athletic check, Rugus. Three, so five. Five, yeah. Okay, so she hits you. You don't get knocked over fully, but you do end up taking a couple steps back because you weren't aware of the blow. You, uh, Donna Mira, hit him and you land completely fine. Like, it was, like, all a part of your plan. Like, you, like, like ran straight into him almost, like, headbutt forward <laughs> with it and just, boom, hit him and just fall. <laughs> oh, didn't see you there. <laughs> So now that you all are in the room, without perception checks, you can see as you guys look up, it looks like a wooden plank with a giant spike attached to it, where if you would hit the trigger, it would come down and impale you straight in like your ribs, chest area, stomach, you know, like dead center, and it pulls you back up. So you look up and you see this, and there is a body still stuck to the spike, and you see it's another one of the, the triple Bs. We keep going. So, you now, in this room, you see two doors. There's one to the east and one to the west. Sorry, if you went to the west, one to the east and one to the north. I, so, east... I walk forward and I go to the north one. Okay. Next so, east. these are double doors. Everything else in this, in this place has been single doors. These are double doors. So, you open... The, uh, them up, and in front of you, you see servant quarters. You see a couple beds, tables, a small kitchen tape, like kitchen, like like a stove and stuff like that, like something that's like a makeshift kitchen. Okay. And crates that used to hold food, but over the 800 years, you can see it's gone to dust. And torches. Are... And torches okay. as well, yeah. But despite how long it's been, you see the wood of the furniture in there it's still holding up. It's a little moldy, but the fact that it's held up for so long shows that this was a finely made area. It looks like this is where the clerics of Emrius lived in this area. Okay. So I'm breathing really heavily and I go, Look! I'm brave! You're the most bravest. Thank you, Nessie. There is no one more snowy than you. I love you. Who, who do you not love? He loves everyone. He's a I lover. Love He's a lover. He's a lover, not a fighter. Right. I do both. And we, we walk, I will walk immediately past you out the door, and we go into the next. So this door, the, the door to the east, you see it's like the one before, where it's slightly open as if someone banged it closed, but didn't make sure it locked, so it just kind of opened up a little, a little bit. Okay. You push the door open, and it... Slowly. Slowly. Okay. You push the door open and the tunnel is in front of you. But this time, bodies line the wall of this tunnel. And it doesn't go down, it's straight. So this is the only place where the actual like passageway in between rooms is lined with bodies. Donna is still in this? She's that way for an hour, dude. Yep. You exit out of the tunnel and you notice that you are on a balcony with stairs on either side of you leading down to the main floor. You hear this weird sound, as if it's a mix of rushing wind and static electricity. You peer over the balcony, and down 20 feet is the main floor. You see that this is the body prepping area. Stone slabs serve as tables with uh, embalming tools and random liquids filled in vials next to them. On two of the stone slabs, you see some of the last members of the Brown Banner Brotherhood. Their throats slit with their blood running down these stone slabs, gathering into the silver chalice you were hired to retrieve. In front of the chalice, you see a portal opened up and a hellish creature inside of it. Bleach white bone is its face, with no eyes, ears, or nose, just a lipless mouth to reveal its jagged, sharp teeth. Coming out of the sides of its head are two horns that are so red they look as if they are made of blood. 
kneeling in front of this portal and behind the chalice you see the last surviving member of the brown banner brotherhood from the portal the creature says to which the kneeling human replies yes my master my life is yours as he says this, the creature's gaze inside the portal looks up and notices you all on the balcony. Rufus Gardo, Gardo, I The kneeling human turns around as well, notices you, turns back to his portal, and says, I'll take care of them, my master. And the portal closes. Initiative rolls. Can I s say before the portal something? Mm -hmm. Or no? No? Okay. Uh, four. For for this purposes, the uh, the villain will go last. So. Thirteen. The moment I saw it, I wanted to ask, and I want to know as you, you as DM would allow me to. Um, would you allow me as Grenric? to use divine sense to know veritably that this is a fiend. All right. So you are almost kind of like knocked back a couple of feet. You are like, you're discombobulated. You are so confused as if almost in the presence of a god. Yeah. Something so powerful yeah. that even if you were to be aware of its senses, it would kill you outright to be in the presence of it. Who would like to go first? I go into a rage. Okay. You see, you see me just get really red. And I go... Aah! And I uh, immediately... Can I take, like, a jumping swipe? Can I do that? So if you want to do that, you'll have to make an athletics check, which no matter what, you'll succeed in jumping it. Okay. But if you fail the athletics check, you'll take damage from the board. Okay, sure. So I go up, and as I'm jumping... I'm yelling out, You filthy swine, you make pact with devils! And he, so I got a 18 okay. to athletics. This jump is no problem. Okay, to and I wish to, uh, like, with my hammer, I wish to, uh, I scream out, In the name of my peoples, you will burn in ice! And I searing smite this guy. For you, Searing Smite does ice damage instead of fire damage, because you're a, a paladin of Thrymir. Yeah. Okay, so I got a 18. Okay. Do I hit? Yes, you okay. hit. So you're jumping off this balcony, full disregard for yourself. You just want to sink a blow as hard as you possibly can into this guy. Okay. So you, I mean, you just jump, and you sink it, like, straight into his collarbone. Yeah. Okay, and you are so sure of this strike. I mean, you can see, like, ice and divine power just blow off this attack. And you're like, you know what? I single-handedly just killed this guy in okay. one blow. Yeah. And as it comes, you see your axe has not even dented his skin. You still see me in a rage, but you see me wide-eyed. So I will fata into behind him. Okay. So I, I dash behind him. Wham! Try to hit him in the back of the head. Okay. You get advantage because you're directly behind him. <gasps> 20. Crit! Okay. Oh! That would be an 18 plus, uh, plus your dex, right? Oh no, plus 5 to hit. So 23. Okay. You sink an attack. Alright. So it's 2d4. Plus six, ten, fourteen, another four, eighteen. So, so you know, like in cartoons, yes. when like someone like hits something like solid steel, right. and like they're like vibrating, shaking. Right. That is you right now. You you leap behind this guy off the balcony, like full backflip, super gracefully, like master artist, right? Mm -hmm. Like like a do. Yeah. And you just, like, you line up the shot, like, straight in the back of the head. You hit it as hard as you can, so sure of yourself. And as you hit it, it, like, vibrates through your body. You hit again, and same thing. It is just almost like hitting a solid block of steel. Okay. And I kind of look at you. Uh... I don't know. Next. 
We're gonna go next. Nessie, what do you do? Nessie. I'm out. I'm gonna do my dissonant whisper. Dissonant whispers, okay. Uh, Dang. 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 so damage. So you start to like make your sounds that you're used to like distracting someone and it hits him and he looks back at you and it echoes back at you. Make it a wisdom or the same saving throw for the spell. <laughs> you you like you start making sounds and like try to distract him. He looks right up at you. The, the voices you make reverberate back at you. Okay. And almost like it's your own spell being cast against you but you're able to stave it off. All right. Where did you say the chalice was? Uh, it's right in front of him. Blood! I, I make an attempt to get the chalice. It, as you're like, I'm invisible, he doesn't know what's going on, so you dash, you jump off the balcony, give me an athletics check. 13. Okay, so you jump off, you hit, the ground, not landing a full blow, you take two points of damage. As it, like you hit the ground, mm -hmm. you're able to kind of roll to save off some of the damage, which is why you only took two. And you hit the ground, you roll, you keep going, you grab the chalice. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Not 20. Awesome. So you grab the chalice, and you start to hear a language with inside your head you've never heard before. It sounds demonic and evil and weird so you can hear these voices how do you like respond to them oh well i already hear voices but like <laughs> the person who's not insane and knows that there's a sprite next to them like these are actual voices okay as i'm holding the chalice hmm. no i'm fine thank you <laughs> so you grab the chalice and you start to turn away and you head back up the sta up towards one of the stairs. So go ahead and move her like at the base of one of the stairs. Perfect. Okay. Uh, bottom of the round. It is now his turn. So he starts doing that super evil kind of monotonous like ha 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 like laugh you know. And he starts, the, where you hit him with his, with your axe, Grenric, yes. he takes his hand and starts ripping off his flesh. Ah. 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 You, you don't need to do that! You don't need to do that, comrade! Uh, for your own good, I need to stop you! And I take my warhammer... Okay. And I want to uh, attack him. 11. Uh, 21. You hit. Okay. <laughs> and I wish to burn a smite at the same time, which is a d8. Okay. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 points of damage. Okay. So once again, like, you just come straight down. <gasps> the amount of damage you did on a single blow, like, you would expect, like, someone, like, just to hit him straight in, like, a temple and just completely kill him in a single blow. Okay. But you hit, and once again, it just hits his head, and there is no force or reverberation. Oh. Like, you are once again like a, a cartoon character shaking from the blow as if you hit a solid block of steel. And I yell out, I didn't mean that, comrade! <laughs> so, ice, divine power just blow off this attack, and it seems to not even affect him in the slightest way. Can I see the chalice moving? Yeah, you can, you can see it levitate up as someone who you think is Donna Mira is now mm -hmm. taking this chalice away. Yeah, if I if I saw him actually like lock eyes with me and I knew his. Yeah, he's. I mean, you can tell he knows you're there because you're holding the chalice. The chalice yeah. is not invisible like you. No, exactly. Yeah, I mean, okay. obviously, I know so his you intentions. like you you dig your hands, you feel a body, and you pick it up, and now you have the chalice with you. Right, so it's, uh, it's time to go. No, I did not touch the chalice, though. I, I did it. Okay. Yeah. It is time to go. Okay, so you're like halfway through the other tunnel into the, yeah. into the previous room. Okay. Yeah. Tasha's hideous laughter. Okay. And you have to do a... Wisdom check. Listen. Give me a wisdom check. Oh, all right. So once again, you start you you tell a joke that you think will find him funny, like the funniest joke you've ever said. Go. 
What did the cowboy say to the wiener dog? Go on, little doggy! <laughs> 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 I'm so glad I dashed out of that. <laughs> and so you say that and thinking he's going to explode in laughter where he cannot control himself. But once again, the spell like reverberates back at you. And even though you find it funny, <laughs> it doesn't hold you like it would normally Tasha's hideous laughter. Okay, so Ooh. it's now his turn. He's still kind of like... Man like laughing evilly and he's ripping off flesh and ha as he's doing this you start to see horns as his face has gone pale white like the creature you've seen before in the portal he starts to grow horns that, that look as if made of blood like, much like the creature in the portal as well <gasps> <laughs> His body now is like almost like it's complete and total like bone, mm -hmm. but the bone that you see is not white, it's black. Okay. Nessie. I climb up on Grunrek. I know, I know. This is bad, bad. Let's go, let's go, let's go! So, it's now his turn. You see him, he's now completely done ripping off all the flesh. There, I mean, there is almost nothing left besides, like, bone and, like, the organs that are inside the bone. He lifts up into the air as he spreads his arms across, almost as, as if, like, a, a crucified Jesus, and says, Rise, my minions. Oh, no. And as he says this, you start to hear bone, like, crack. <laughs> They start to move and get up out of their spots. Can can the monk and the and the warlock hear this? Everyone. It's across the entire place. Okay. And so as this happens, you see the room or the, the staircase that you came from, you see these undead creatures come and fill the entire staircase. Uh-huh. So you know that the only place for you to go is into that north room where the servant's quarters is. You cover my back! And as you say that, you look behind you, and the, the ta Tagan, who you think it is, the guy that was raised up there, has now completely vanished. Mm. And I, I hold her down to my shoulder, and I run... For all intents and purposes, you meet up with Rugus and a floating chalice. Okay. Okay. And I go, oh, we got the bad bad. And so you see the route you came up is now completely blocked by these undead creatures. It's worse, worse. Uh, I point to the staircase. Uh, can we start another combat? Yeah, we'll, we'll say, so... At university, do you guys decide you headed to the servants' quarters? We can't push our way through. I, it looks as if there's an unending line of these bodies coming from the stairs. I, I, as I'm holding them, I, I grab you by your. Do you have armor on? Nope. No, he's a monk. I grab you by your shirt, your collar, and I pull you. <laughs> Your cloak. And I'm pulling you this one. Come on, come on! And so, I run, and I throw you past me, and I shut the door, and I hold this door shut. While those who are doing that, ladies, would you like to do anything? I don't know. So, having some sort of hint that the chalice got him in there, mm -hmm. unharmed, can it get us out unharmed? 
What would you like to do with the chalice? Essentially, hold it out in front of me, and they pretty much spread like the Red Sea. They, so you, like you're being carried by Rugus, and you see that there is no way out. The only way is to a dead end to the servants' quarters. You hold out the chalice in hope that it would do something. It seems to have no effect. An Eldritch Blast. So, you, seeing no effect, <laughs> you like you, you take the chalice into one hand, and you point a finger at the staircase, hoping to hit one of them, and give me an attack roll. Eleven plus... And your number is over on the on, right. on the spell page. It's like a five. So five. you 16. you like you point the finger. You all see this like purple greenish like hue laser come out of her finger and hit one of the undead creatures okay. straight in the face. It's pushed back ten feet and topples. Okay. Everyone behind it, but you see as they hit the ground, they rise back up towards you. This is bad. Bad. Nessie, you're the only one who hasn't acted. Okay. I use my vicious mockery. <laughs> okay. Um, so you start to say some words and you start to to like try to distract them. Yeah. You immediately can tell there is no effect. Mm -hmm. You start to say stuff and they don't even seem to pay attention to what you're saying. Yeah. So You don't even real zombies. So the undead creatures start to walk towards you. You guys run into this room over here. Mm -hmm. You have two rounds before they start barreling through those doors because they're moving slow. What do you do? I put myself with my... I get into it like a squat position mm -hmm. and I hold myself against the door and are there like handles? Yeah. Okay, I grab the handles and I go, figure it out! So he's now just up against his door as hard as he possibly can to make sure it stays closed. Okay, with one hand I start frantically looking for an escape route, a hatch. There is nothing in this room. Oh, shoot. Bleep. I said shoot. Oh, okay. <laughs> bleep. Don't bleep. So... So Donna Mira, in a complete and total frantic, is now running across the entire room, looking. She's like trying to throw over tables, the bunk beds, looking for something. There seems to be no window or doors within this room and to leave. No doors. No windows and no doors. Okay. Any bright ideas there? Rugus or Nessie? If I had another key point. I would say maybe you could use Pass Without a Trace, but... Pass Without a Trace, all it does is not leave foot tracks. No, it gives you plus ten stealth. You, if they can see you? No, they can't. They, no, you're, you are magically... It, it says in the description you are magically hidden. And the only way to see you is if it's magic. Oh, wow. All right, didn't know that. That would have been good. Yeah, it would have been great if I had an extra key yeah. point. Oh, boy! I should definitely d dash out of here! Dumb dwarves. I'm just kidding, boy. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> so, Nessie. I am going to take a key point and shoot myself in the face. Nessie, <laughs> what would you like to do? Nessie, she's trying to figure out what she wants to do, and she's like, I should heal him. I should look for an escape. Rukus, do you need something? She, like, Nothing. fumbles yeah. in, in it and is so confused and intimidated by the situation at hand. She, like, kind of freezes in fear at the amount of options she has in front of you. Rugus. And then I will, I will try to proceed to see if there's anything that will trigger or anything like that. Okay. So, like, you you sit there and using your monk abilities, you kind of, you, you, you focus on, like, one of the chairs. Like, I'm going to focus on this chair and I'm going to perceive the world around me. Like, a little bit better with just hearing. So you just hear footsteps walking towards you. You start to hear like people banging against the door. You hear Donna Mira like turning over things. tables, trying to find something underneath the bed. You hear the whimpers and cries of Nessie, but nothing seems to do you any good. <laughs> Top of the round. As now, 
things are starting to kind of like batter against the door. But because there's not enough of them, you as uh, Grenric are able to completely hold them off. Okay. But you know with the amount of forces that are coming, yeah. next round, you won't be able to hold them back. Okay. I press myself up against the door to try and help him. Okay. And I kind of, and I again, I look and I'm like, I don't know how we're going to get out of this. We fight. And we fight. One last ride. I look at him and I, um, you, you see me, um, go like this and, uh, bash my chest with my with my fist and I go I'm ready and I grab my my uh my battle axe and I I get ready if if something comes through I'll slash it okay I'm just gonna have it ready in action I'm ready to just claw at them if they come in so you're like you're sitting there and yeah. like, you have a dagger in hand the first one that comes My in, you're just stab straight in the head. Yes. Okay. So, okay. I'm ready. So now everyone that's against the door, there is enough of these undead creatures that are now banging against the door, one by one. They were like together trying to go through. But because Grenric and, and Rugus are there, you guys are able to hold off for this round. Okay. But you know next round, with the force that's coming, it's going to blow open. And I, uh, I look at Rugus. Yes. And what do I see in your eyes? So Rugus, you're sitting there and you realize there's no escape. There is hundreds of creatures of undead coming at you. I say to myself, I, I, I accept. I accept what's gonna happen. So I, I accept it. Like, look, I've made it this far, barely. In my life, that's how it looks so so Grenric, you look up at him, and he has almost this peaceful calm about him, like he knows what's about to happen, and he's okay with it. As top of the round comes, all four of you have your bodies pressed up against this door. Even the koala and the halfling are trying to help hold back the undead horde. But they are relentless and keep on bashing and pushing against this door. Eventually, they overcome. The doors blow open and you can see hundreds, if not thousands, of these undead creatures coming straight in to kill you. And we will end there for the night.